everyone. This is Josh with a fun software development tutorial for you today. We're going to be talking about the basics of software testing. If you want to become a software engineer, especially professionally, it's really important to test your code. We as developers want to make sure that our code is bug free, reliable, and works how we intend for our end users, whatever the target consumer looks like. So there are many types of software testing, and today we're just going to be talking about three basic kinds that you should know. So let's dive in first by talking about what I would consider the simplest form of testing, and that is manual testing. If you've ever written code before, you probably have done some form of manual testing. And this simply means a human interacting with the software the way the intended consumer of the software will. So for example, let's say we want to test a uh, program that detects a Bitcoin address in your copy paste buffer or clipboard and replaces it with an attacker address. So like a cool educational malware. Um, the way that you would test this manually is to run your program in the background, copy a Bitcoin address, and then paste it to make sure that it changes the way that you intended. This type of testing is great because it's simple. Uh, again, you know, if you do small side projects like I do, you may find this the easiest way to test your software. Just interact with it, you know, click, run command line, uh, incantations, however you want to interact with that software, and make sure that it runs as expected. Make sure you don't get any unexpected error. Uh, you can use you know, your normal use cases and get uh, the results that you expect. So it's very simple, it's very easy to do. It doesn't require writing any additional code, like test code for automation. There's a lot of cons to this though, especially as your projects scale or become bigger. It's very easy to miss cases, especially sort of edge cases that are uncommon when you're doing manual testing. You might not think of uh, bad inputs, for example. So for small projects, manual testing generally works pretty well. And manual testing is an important part of larger projects as well, but it has its limitations. So the next type of testing we're gonna talk about is unit testing. And this sort of begins our dive into automated or scripted forms of tests that you can run against your software. Unit testing is scripted testing of individual units, for example, functions or modules. So a simple example of this would be if you have a library that uh, calculates statistics on a list of numerical data. So let's say you have a software library that allows you to calculate the sum, the average, the max, and the min uh, of a, a list of data. Unit tests would test, for example, the average function, the sum function, the min function, or the max function, with varying forms of uh, lists as inputs. And this kind of testing is great because it's easy, it's automated, and you can test lots of functions. So if you have a stat library that's full of all sorts of functionality beyond even just your sum, your min, your max, you can repeatedly run those tests against a large set of functions with lots of different input data and make sure that everything is working as expected. This also makes it easy to find regressions in your software uh, as you continue to make improvements. So if you have a unit test suite and you make a change to let's say the average function to make it more efficient, uh, your unit test will catch uh, if you made a change that breaks calculating the average correctly. Because you already have a bunch of automated tests that will try a bunch of different input lists and make sure the results are what you expect. So unit tests are great, and they're also easy to use even for small projects. If your project is small, you can pretty quickly uh, write a set of unit tests that will check against your basic functionality. A disadvantage of this is unit tests don't test the interactions of larger systems. So we're gonna talk about that in our next type of testing. And this is what we call integration testing sometimes can be called end-to-end -end testing and various other sort of subtypes 
Uh, this is again a form of automated testing, but here we're going to test against larger system interactions. So as an example, let's say we have a web application that has a user interface, uh, an API, and is backed by a database full of useful information. Say for example, a database full of fitness training information that a user can search. An example of an integration test would be uh, an automated program that you know enters a query in the search box, make sure that we get back some well-formed data uh, that makes sense. So it's sort of testing our whole application end to end, but in a way that's automated instead of a human going in and typing different queries against our database. This of course has the advantage of being able to test whole apps in a way that's automated. So we have the advantage of being able to check our system interactions without having to have a human type 10 different possible search queries into a search box, make sure the data is coming back, is formatted correctly, and all of that. You know, a simple form of an integration test like this can be used as what we might call a smoke test uh, that isn't super thorough, but makes sure the basic functionality of our application works every time we make the change. Now the disadvantage of this is depending on how well your tests are written, you might miss some of the individual functionality that you would get with unit tests. So say for example, if you uh, have a test that types a search query and make sure that we get some HTML back, your test might not, uh, for example, catch that you queried for data on chin-up progressions, but you got back data on how to do barbell squats. Um, so you might be testing for, you know, example, well-formed HTML in your integration test, but not actually making sure that that data is correct. And that's why, you know, we often as professional software developers or even developers of smaller projects uh, use a combination of these forms of testing, right? We would have a unit test suite to check our basic sum average max functionality. Uh, we might have a unit test that checks our basic database functionality. Make sure that when you search for chin-ups, you get data back about chin-ups. Um, but we would also combine that with integration tests to test our command line functionality, our whole website interaction. And still, probably, you'll do some manual testing. You might just click on things yourself and make sure that the interaction makes sense the user experience is what you want, which is something you can't check with automation. So there's really no right or wrong answer for how you test an application. The important thing is, it, is just that your code is tested. You want to make sure that you don't have bugs that make your software less reliable or harder for your users to use. And there's lots more different kinds of tests that are out there. These are just what I consider to be some broad categories that are useful to know about. There's many different subtypes of these, but in general, you want to know about manual testing, about unit testing, integration testing, and all of the different ways you can automate checks against your software to make it better. So as always, I hope you have found this tutorial interesting and informative. There's lots more tutorials available um, on my YouTube channel, and there's articles as well if you prefer reading. And thank you for learning something new with me today.